This is a 1988 Johnson 90 horsepower outboard. It came on a pontoon boat I purchased a couple of years ago before I finished this building. Um, it looked pretty nice, so I decided to save it even though I sold the boat. And here it sits. I know nothing about it other than it looks okay. Uh, boat was last used in 2009 that I know of, so it's possible it's been sitting even longer. So it basically needs to be checked out, gone through, and see if it runs. All right, let's get all of these spark plugs out. Let's check the compression, and while we're there, we'll check for spark. This is interesting. Take a look at the battery cable. Something ain't right in there. It was somewhat loose, not that bad. All right, we have 90 PSI on the first cylinder. We have no spark out of that cylinder. However, the bottom cylinder is arcing between the coil and the head. So we may need some coils. We'll see where this leads us shortly. All right, 90 with spark. So that's good. Uh, did I put up the top? So top cylinder is working, bottom is not. Let's see if we can get to a little charge coil wire. Not easily, but we can. Now this weird thing that's going on over there is it's solenoids clicking, even though it shouldn't be. We'll worry about the spark in a second. 90. No spark. And 90 with no spark. So either we need three coils, or a power pack, or a timer, or a stator. Also, should be spinning over better than that, so we probably need a starter and or solenoid. Okay, we know we have one cylinder firing. So what I'm gonna do here, oh, the reason I removed that box was to be easier to get to these things. Remove this, because we know this one probably works, the signal. I'm gonna remove from the opposite side hope it reaches so if our power pack is good it should still send power over the coil and this coil should mysteriously fire so what I did there was take our one known good signal wire connect it to this coil so if this coil fires now we know that the coil is okay if it doesn't we know we need a coil So, as you can see, it fires. So we're good there. Now, just for giggles. All right, our, all cylinders are now firing, which isn't necessarily uncommon, but if you notice how much faster it's spinning over now, demonstrate pretty well. I bet you. Let's find a better ground. I'm gonna do it. Ignition, ignition, 
ignition. Ignition. So, we simply aren't turning our engine over fast enough in order to get good spark. Now I'm kind of curious. We have a freshly charged battery. So that's not the issue. Battery cables look good, but I'm clean them anyway. Get all of our spark plugs in. They're not in all the way, but they're in there. You never get the engine started like that. That's just silly. Oh, this thing is burning hot. Oh, jeez. All right, that's probably not any good. You know the crappy part about this? I'm going to make a video on the carburetors. I want it to be most authentic as possible. Since I removed the VRO pump to get the starter, I need to put the VRO pump back on for reattached for my carburetor videos be a little more authentic all right new U starter is installed let's hook up our remote switch here see if things improve no, not really uh, I'd say it's a little better all right we got spark Starter is not burning hot. All right, starter is working again. Cylinders are firing. We still have some that are arcing, but we'll worry about that in a bit. All right, we're good. Let's see if the power trim and tilt works. This is the connector where the throttle would usually get plugged in. Red wire is hot. Green is down, blue is up, so we are going up. We're going to make a jumper wire from the red to the blue. Yep, yeah, I'd say that's working. It's uh, pretty clean and nice down there, too. Well, with the starter ignition kind of working, um, now it's the fuel. We probably should replace the fuel lines, clean the carburetors, and then we'll work on the rest of the motor. And as you can see, everything is easier with the carburetors removed. So if you're doing the carburetors, might as well do the water pump too. All right, carburetors are rebuilt. Fuel lines are replaced, water pump, gear oil has been changed. I'm going to install some new spark plugs, and then we'll go see if this engine will fire up.
I have a little harness hooked up right here to a key. So we have start, choke, and stop probably works. Uh, I'm going to get some fuel to it. It's first time filling up, so we're going to keep a special eye out for fuel leaks. Feel like fuel is flowing. All right, we have no gas flowing to the carbs. So this is actually pretty interesting because fuel is not making it from our fitting to here. And that's odd. So our fitting is clogged. In all my years, never actually uh, seen that. That's uh, weird. <clears throat> yeah, wow. Who would have thunk it? Okay, new, old fitting. Drive from the scrap yard, aka my bucket of parts. This is off a 70s motor. So it doesn't have the VRO, and it's a little smaller than I think it should be to fill this hole, but it'll work. Well, let's try it again. Water back on. Now we'll see if it starts. Luckily, I was able to kill it that fast. but it's not in the water so that's it's not unusual no water nothing coming out of the telltale which could be clogged like everything else on this was all right i have my carburetor cleaning tool you can clearly see that there was something in well there is something in here hopefully that takes care of it let's find out
running hot. But I do think it should have more water than it does. So let's disconnect the uh, water line. See what that does. Uh, I think the lack of water flow could be the hose. And my muffs are old, and I have that little valve on there, which could be causing restriction. So I'm going to undo all of that. Kink is gone. Water back on. All right, what have we learned from this? First, I'm going to start checking fuel fittings, make sure they're not clogged. They never are, but this was embarrassing. Secondly, um, on my little motors, you know, two, four, six, nine, 15, 20, 25, 35, 40, 50. You can get away with a throttle like that. It's really not going to run away on you like that. This one was about there, so a third throttle when I was trying to start it, and you heard how fast it ran away. So to start it, I was right there, and even that was a little high, so right about there. And then I'd go to here, and it just idled. Idle was still a little too high, so I think it being out of the water, Let's go with that. When I put it in the water, we'll see where it is then, but I can adjust the idle screw there. Otherwise, it sounds good. Um, it's a little hard to tell if it's overheating with my hand on the thing because it's 121 outside right now. So anything I touch is burning hot. This is in the shade, so it's a little, little cooler, but it's still pretty hot. But it doesn't seem like it because it, it's not burning your hand off. It's, it's okay. Uh, next thing, this. Horrible idea because I you know you hold it like this and you get shocked from once it fires up I guess the ground or the black and yellow still sends out a ignition So you get spark plug shock coming out of there, but it did it did work So I mean it just needs a little box Maybe if I have a little box I'll put it on the box and continue to use my little setup here These wheels a buddy of mine Jack he came to me one day and he said Hey Brandon, you're always making those outboard stands. I found these old wheels. You can have them for one of your stands. And I was like, yeah, thanks. 60 year old wheels, that's, that's what I need. These are the nicest rolling wheels I've ever seen. Like, really, they are old, very old. I'm in dirt. Well, a dirty garage floor with junk all over it. And look at this thing, it's, just, it's beautiful. I mean, yeah, the stand, I don't care for these stands, but those wheels, those wheels are gonna be with me for a long time. So I'm going to put the missing pieces back together and I'm going to throw it on the boat and we're going to see how this goes.